Hey there, I'm a DIY track guy. This is my humble garage, and today is rim repainting day. Let's go. Please like and subscribe for more edge of your seat thrill rides like this one. Oh, and in this video, I try to paint stuff. To see me paint other things poorly, watch this. These are my friend Terry's old rims. They are manufactured by TR Motorsports and they are a 15 by nine. He used them for many years on his track Miata and when he got them, they came in a gray finish. He painted them in this matte black and it held up well over the years. Instead of just slapping these on my Miata as is, I wanted to change their color. But before we paint anything, we need to clean up and prep these things. If this thing looks like it's been around since the Reagan years, it's probably because it has. Luckily it still works, it's in pretty good condition, so let's go ahead and use it to clean the rims. Dion from OMG Miata clued me in on how even pressure washers need proper maintenance. Most importantly is this high pressure water port that leads to the spray wand hose. The hose has an O-ring on it as well, so it's important that we get this thing lubed up properly. That should do it. So I've been working on cleaning up and pressure washing these two rims using some simple green to degrease them. But I've noticed that there's some areas where there's caked on brake dust or rotor material that has made its way directly into the paint. I've tried hitting it with a Scotch-Brite pad and that doesn't seem to be doing the job. So I'm gonna try something a little bit more abrasive. Well, apparently I didn't press record because you missed a lot of fun. I'm at the stage of getting really tired with this job. So I hit it with this brass bristled rotary tool on a drill. What's left of this wire wheel on this Dremel and a couple of these guys. That's about as much as I want to do. I'm just going to clean these guys up with some simple green, pressure wash it, paint it tomorrow. However it turns out is the way it turns out. Sorry for all the noise, that's my air compressor going in the background there. So even though I tried to clean these up with a wire wheel and I washed them, there's still some spots in the corners here that has debris, rust, dirt that's caked onto the rim. This is a pneumatic or air die grinder, a mini one. I get it, not everybody has an air compressor. So if you don't have one of these, you can also just use a rotary tool like this with a small wire wheel. It'll just take you longer. After a few minutes of wire wheeling, this thing looks much better. I'm pretty pleased that most of the gunk that was in the corners is now gone. So I just got to do this for the other three of them. I'm on the last rim here and this is working awesome. Rusty deposits like this are no match for this thing. And in the tight corners like this, this small wire wheel on the rotary tool is working out great. So let's finish this one up. So I got the rims hanging here like slabs of beef in a meat locker. The plan is to wipe it down with this, then spray it with this. I'm really glad I'm doing this. All this dirt would have prevented good paint adhesion. All right, that's not bad. I just gotta do the other three rims. Okay, that's it for the acetone. I already got to run. So this is after two coats of primer and things are absolutely looking 
just okay, actually. Some spots where the old paint flaked off and you can kind of see some rough edges. And the rusty debris on the corners of these spokes is still visible through the primer. Well, folks, we've reached the most critical part of this perilous journey. We either ascend to the summit of Mount Victory or tumble into the abyss of defeat. I feel like my whole life has culminated to this very moment. Now we spray the bronze. Cue the music. So the bronze paint has dried nicely and it's looking pretty good. There's some imperfections on the rim surface itself where I wire wheeled it and that's come through. But overall, I think this is a really good five footer. Good from five feet away. So next up, tack cloth and then we spray some clear. For the clear coat, I'm going with the Duplicolor matte clear coat. Instructions say two to three light coats, 10 minute dry times in between. I never paint anything gloss because it's just so hard to get it to be smooth and shiny and it shows off every imperfection. I just can't pull it off. So what did we learn today? Today I learned that it is indeed possible to refinish and repaint an old set of crusty rims at home with limited skill, tools, and intellect. For prep, we washed and wire wheeled these four rims twice. And frankly, that was the worst and most important part of the job. I realize now that if I wanted even better results, I should have leveled up my prep game, filling in any dents, filing out any rough spots, and sanding everything smooth before even thinking about touching a can of paint. But excuses, these are used budget rims meant for track use. They'll be covered in brake dust and tire marbles. It's not a show car. I'm kind of an idiot. And many, many other things that would explain why these are good from far, but far from good. But if I had to do it again, I don't think I'd do much differently. But the question remains, should you even try refinishing an old set of rims at home? Wouldn't it make more sense to just buy a brand new set of budget track rims? There's many good low cost flow form wheels to choose from available shipped to your door from a multitude of great online vendors. A quick search on Goodwin Racing shows that you can get a nice set of Aventi S1 15 by nines for $176 US, which is about $230 Canadian, plus shipping and fees. So let's say about $250 Canadian each or $1,000 for a set of four. In contrast, I spent about $250 on paint and supplies and the used set of rims and my time. Plus I got to learn a new skill that I'll probably use again in future. So it's kind of a win-win. Anyways, if you're on the fence about refinishing a set of rims because of limited tools, skills, and confidence, let me be the first to tell you that you're good enough, you're smart enough, and gosh darn it, people like you. All right, Track DIYers, that's all from the Mostly Useless Garage. You're awesome, I'm useless, thanks for watching. Before anyone asks why I didn't mask off the hub surface, after we were all done, I wire wheeled this down to bare metal, so we're good.